Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to this learning experience brought to you by AWS and Infosys. My name is Cody and welcome back to TechStrong Learning, where we have an exciting panel ahead. Before we get this conversation rolling, I do have a couple of housekeeping notes I'd like to review with everyone. First of all, today's session is being recorded. So if you miss any of our discussion, if you'd like to rewatch, or if you'd like to share with your team, you will be receiving an email with a link to access the on-demand recording shortly after we conclude this live session today. If you'd like to engage with us, there are a few options to do so. The first and the easiest option is the chat tab, which can be found on the right side of your screen. If you see that chat tab, let us know from where in the world you are joining us today. If you have any questions for us, we do want you to send those into the Q&A tab. Sending your questions to the Q&A helps us keep track of all of the questions that come in, and we'd love to answer as many as we can during our allotted time today. If you jump over to the handout section, you'll see there are a couple of additional resources uploaded for you, so feel free to grab those. And before we close things out today, we are giving away four $25 Amazon gift cards, so be sure to stick around to see if you're one of our lucky winners. So our topic today is Infosys Zero Cost Mainframe Transformations, and we have a whole panel of experts here with us. So I'm just going to introduce our first, Jadeep Sanyal, AVP of AVP and Global Head of Application Modernization Sales at Infosys. So Jadeep and our entire panel, thank you so much for joining us today. But Jadeep, would you like to take it from here? Thank you, Cody. Um, thank you very much. And um, good morning and good afternoon. Uh, and welcome to this webinar on zero cost mainframe transformations. Um, I'm Jadeep, as Cody mentioned, and I take care of app modernization globally for Infosys. Um, I also have a decade of experience in mainframe modernization, so I also double up as an SME. I have a set of colleagues who would, at, uh, who would also join and talk, but uh, they would introduce themselves uh, when they start their presentation. With that, let me quickly take you to our agenda. So the way we have structured the agenda is that we'll start a little bit about Infosys and its mainframe modernization practice, its solutions and offerings. Uh, then we will delve deep into the zero cost uh, um, uh, transformation approach. And uh, now one of the one of the one of the things that this entire approach is based on is our methodology and our platform, the iLead platform. So we will uh, also demo the platform to you, and we will explain how it is really helpful for for this approach. Uh, with that, we will hand it over for a panel discussion on our recent implementation. We will have three panelists join in for that. And the last few minutes, we will leave it out for Q&A. Feel free to put your questions in chat and we will answer it uh, towards the end of the presentation. Thank you. With that, I mean, let me start with our Infosys uh, practice overview. So as you see on the right hand side, we have about 26,000 global talents um, and about we have, uh, we have done about 1,000 mainframe modernization projects in the last decade. The other thing that we, we continuously train, so about 800 consultants are also mainframe modernization experts as well as cloud experts. And all of these teams comes together in the context of the clients to even uh, to, to offer to deliver the modernization program. Uh, we continuously do thought leadership blogs, white papers, webinars like this. And we are constantly evolving our practice and working with more clients and helping them to modernize their mainframes. If you look at the right hand side, uh, we are also have recognitions from all the top analysts in the world who track this space. So, for example, ISG uh, provider lens, uh, they have uh, ranked us as leader in mainframe and um, service and solutions for the for this year and the last two years. HFS has ranked as number two in application modernization services. So as Everest, Forrester and Nelson Hall. Now, in many of the cases, they don't have a separate mainframe modernization service. So they, when they say application modernization, they include mainframe modernization. And all of them has ranked as leaders uh, in this in this area. What you see at the bottom is our pure strength of our, our in, in the AWS platform. So you have 27,000 people who are trained, 9,000 people certified. Many of the people who certified are also experts on the mainframe modernization. So we actually bring in the uh, bring in both the mainframe modernization skills as well as the cloud AWS skills to help our clients on this journey. 
in addition to that, we have a specific cons AWS consulting competencies. We have got industry-wide platforms. Uh, we will uh, demo one of the platforms to you. And, uh, and our objective is, of course, to help our clients. And so we keep evolving the platforms, curate the knowledge, and then bring it into the platform. Now, one of the critical points about our mainframe organization practice is also the methodology or the framework. And we call it the art framework. Uh, the art, we, we believe mainframe organization is not just science, but also an art. And the A for art is accelerate, R is renew, and T is transform. Now, if you look at accelerate, these are some of the mainframe modernization options we recommend when the client wants to work, uh, want to keep the mainframe and want to keep working and optimize on the mainframe. Uh, so we get some benefits here. We, of course, get uh, 10 to 25 percent reduction in IT spend. Uh, we also look at um, 60 to 70 percent reduction coming from license costs. So these are some of the benefits. And the approach we generally take is that we, of course, do a discovery and assessment. Uh, you know, then we look at applications on the mainframe, which we can retire. We look at MIPS optimization, uh, software asset optimization, migrating from expensive softwares to low cost softwares. And then we also look at technology standardization. So if you're running a old uh, like legacy, like for example, Supra Mantis, we also standardize to more COBOL, DB2 kind of a landscape. Now, the next approach is renew. Under Renew, you, we do multiple things. So Renew is all about making the mainframes uh, digital, uh, make the mainframe ready for participating in the digital economy. So how do we do that? We expose APIs. Uh, we do replacement of green screen UI modernization. We do batch modernization, uh, implement DevOps on the mainframes. Uh, for example, in one of the clients, uh, we have uh, looked at, uh, we have actually offloaded the entire dev and test of the mainframe. Uh -huh that the client um, so that you can save costs and also you can you don't have a contention of the dev and test region so that's something we do with devops and the last bit is important which is unlock data on zos and this is primarily looking at the data and uh, we are seeing how we can do a cdc or change data capture move the data almost real time onto aws and then you can run your um, analytics or your reporting out of aws so that's the third bit um, that's the fifth bit and the, the primary reason for you to do re renew is, as I said, to open up for the digital economy, make it more omnichannel channel presence, uh, make the platform more responsive, make open up the platform possibly for even mobile channels. But the last one is the most interesting one, which is the transform, which is to get off the mainframe. Again, there are multiple options to do that. The first one is, of course, rehost, where you mm, take the application and uh, lift and shift and move it on to micro focus on AWS. So that's a rehost one. Then you have code refactoring where you where you have the application, but you use Blue Age to convert that into Java microservices running on uh, running on mainframes, uh, running on AWS cloud. Uh, then you have COTS replacement by which you actually replace the mainframe application by let's say a, a product like a banking core banking product or maybe a guideware for insurance again running on AWS. Uh, then you have data platform modernization. This is also a technique by which we look at the application running on the mainframe. And through a domain-driven data-centric approach, we kind of rewrite that um, into, into onto cloud. And the fifth one is where you look at the application, you extract rules, and then you re-engineer onto the, onto the cloud natively. Now, uh, this is, of course, done when you want to change your business process or you want to have a significant cost reduction or sometimes when your data centers are closing and you have to really rapidly get out. So then you have to do all these approaches like transformation. Uh, now, if you see the yellow, if you see the yellow boxes, those uh, uh, those are the options uh, we wanted to highlight, which in, which has the M2 platform of AWS. Uh, that we leverage for those. So, for example, for discovery assessment, AWS M2 has discovery tools. For unlocking data, AWS M2 has options where you can move the data out. And they have got uh, microfocus under their M2. They have got Blue Edge. And, and then again, we have their extraction of rules, all of that. So those are the ones where we have a play of AWS M2. Now, it's important that we understand all this because this is going to be critical when I actually explain the zero cost transformation approach in the next slide. So how does how does how do we do zero cost transformation, right? So 
um, the way to do is that we have we have a set of cost optimization levers that we have identified and that we apply to the customer mainframe landscape. And the objective is to get uh, savings out of that and then plow the savings back into the value creation, which is about migrating or uh, offloading the mainframe. Now, let me a little bit dig deep into this. So for example, when we are looking at the cost optimization levers, what you see on the left hand side. Uh, so this is about the first thing that we use is that when we take over these applications uh, running on mainframes or AS400, we look at how we can improve uh, the service excellence, whether we can uh, improve the way the current team is managing the applications. Can we can we kind of do some optimization on the on the on the people front? Can we move some? Uh, can we take over some some of the work and can we even move to near shore and therefore save some money? So that's the first lever. The second lever is that can we use more automation? Can we use more AI to predict? Uh, the next set of um, next set of trouble and uh, next set of tickets that will come up and can we auto remediate them and therefore can we also look at how we can improve the entire process part so this is the second bit um, the third bit is about software asset optimization now as you know that on the mainframes you may have a similar software uh, um, which is almost doing the similar thing so can i consolidate you may also have expensive software you're running can i kind of move it to a different set of softwares which are cheaper can i even manage the contract of the licenses and therefore bring the infosys approach to negotiate better with the vendor so these are some of the approaches we take from a software asset optimization perspective and the fourth one is of course sourcing and procurement we look at the negotiation we look at vendor consolidation we can we look at how we can um, we look at the tail vendors and see how we can rationalize that so these are some of the approaches we take when we take over and manage the platform for a, for some time the other thing we apply is the application optimization. So we have mainframe applications running. So like I said, we are, we apply our accelerated approach where we can retire the applications. If there are very high uh, MIPS consuming transactions running, either screen or batches, is there a way I can help take it over and then I can optimize and reduce the MIPS consumption? Can I look at the dev test virtualization offloading and dev test environment? Can I look at moving some of the data which is probably not used and then off the disk and move it to tape drive, therefore do, therefore do a storage optimization and reduce cost. Now, all of this, if you see, is going to actually give you a pool of money with which to start the modernization journey. So we can kick off the transformation journey. And as the transformation journey proceeds, the savings that you get from offloading the mainframe can be further plowed back. Now, let me depict that in a simple slide, in simple graph so that it's easier, easier to the audience. So if you see this red line, this red line is the current cost of application support maintenance in, in, in case the client does nothing. Okay. Now, if we take over, if Infosys takes over, this is the blue line. So we do our optimization, the, all the techniques I mentioned in the previous slide, and, uh, and we get some money. We get some savings out of doing, doing this transformation. These savings, as well as some of the funding that we get from uh, AWS, we can actually start the transformation journey, which is this green line. So the green line transformation journey starts. Now, as you go forward, of course, as you grade more and more applications off the mainframe, your transformation cost increase. But one other good thing happens is that the savings from offloading the MIPS actually plows back. So you have two savings coming in somewhere here. You have the savings from main, mainframe offloading kicking in plus your optimization savings also continuously kicks in. So you have more money to fund this transformation. And this process goes on, let's say it gets over in 2028 when the entire mainframe is offloaded and uh, without uh, charging any extra money to the clients based on the savings coming from optimization of the application management process, our retirement of the applications on the mainframe, offloading the mainframe, thereby removing, uh, removing the, uh, thereby uh, reducing the cost of MIPS, as well as some funding that we bring to the table, we are able to transform this entire landscape. So at the end of, let's say, the sixth year, what the client has is a completely transformed landscape without any mainframe, but without any additional money that he has to put on the table. Now, that's the reason this purple line actually shows that this is the cost to the client after we uh, start the transformation. 
if you see the purple line is actually dipping down and this is the money that the client pays so what the client is actually paying is less money than they would have done nothing but the end of it they actually get an extremely transform landscape with no mainframe in the landscape so that's the beauty of this zero cost transformation approach now uh, so i mentioned that there is absolutely some funding is required and that is we are willing to do that but more importantly what you need for this to be successful is a strong framework and i discuss about art and then this automation tools i lead and um, um, and um, i leap and i lead uh, we will demonstrate i lead for you these are tools or platform that we use to gather data quickly understand where are the bottlenecks and then actually use more ai based uh, yeah, techniques to kind of resolve the tickets faster than 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 um, than, than the usual way and so this is all of this is possible because we work uh, absolutely shoulder to shoulder with uh, aws when we do such large scale transmission programs with that i will uh, uh, move to my next slide and i'll talk a little bit of our implementations across industry where we have applied this approach uh, so what you will see here is of course uh, we have implementations we have done across segments across geographies uh, when i say segments i mean we have done it for financial services retailers automotive manufacturers we have also done this kind of work across uh, various approaches so for example we have done with microfocus on aws we have done with blue edge on aws uh, the basic uh, the basic aspect is similar that we we look at the application landscape we see where we can optimize we start funding the transformation and as the, we transform we get more money out of the transformation and then we plow it back in i can give an example of a large banking client in europe that we have just uh, started working with so similarly we are also uh, looking at how we can transform this entire landscape and uh, get them get them off the of uh, at, at at a certain point of time so now with that i would probably uh, hand it over to uh, my colleague rakesh and he can talk about this ilead platform uh, which is the key platform for doing this kind of a uh, assessment and helping in terms of doing this zero cost of transmission so uh, rakesh if you want you can take it and then explain sure thanks a lot daddy for explaining beautifully how the zero cost transformation works i'm rakesh and i work as principal architect at infosys within the legacy modernization practice so my primary focus area is mainframe my uh, migrations or modernization, whether that be within mainframe or taking it off mainframe. Now, in this second part of the webinar, what I'm going to do is show you one of the key success factors of zero cost transformation, which is automation, as mentioned by Jagdeep in the first part of the webinar. But to begin with, let me first show you a quick video, which is meant for the introduction of our platform called iLead. So that's. Being lifelike, responsive, and resilient as an enterprise comes from building sentient systems. But the biggest hurdle in this journey? Legacy applications, which impact your business goals. From poor stakeholder experiences that impact brand perception to inflexible systems that inhibit business resilience. From data inaccessibility leading to poor insights to high operational costs curtailing innovation funds and the inability to support obsolete technologies, all of which inhibit the pace of your business growth. That's why modernizing your legacy IT landscape becomes a strategic imperative to rapidly shape a live enterprise. We help you modernize faster by future-proofing cloud-enabled architecture and transforming of legacy to digital technologies. Respond at the speed of change by innovating with Agile and DevSecOps and gain new efficiencies by leveraging open source, cloud, smart automation, and user experience design. But making this change real calls for a laser focus on critical success factors that make or break a transformation. Like design thinking to reimagine business processes, redefining the technology blueprint, validating techno commercial solutions early and automating to accelerate enabling systems with insights and orchestrating modernization seamlessly with our proven experience we can help you achieve your modernization goals for today's digital age with navigators who sense a smarter future and stay on the edge of next learning and reinventing 
we amplify possibilities with an ecosystem of change makers. But the true multipliers are the platforms and solutions that accelerate your pace of change. And the Infosys Modernization Suite does that with its smart approach to engineering automation across the board. Analyzing legacy to extract business logic, accelerating cloud native applications, automating migration to next gen technologies, assisting the cloud adoption journey, and adopting new age databases. The journey from disrupted to disruptor is accelerated with the Infosys Modernization Suite. We are helping industry leaders create their next normal. Reducing application development time by 50% for an energy and utility provider. Accelerating time to market by 30% for a leading bank while delivering $2 million cost savings. Migrating to highly scalable RDBMS on cloud for a large telecom provider, saving over a million dollars per year, and driving down operating costs for an insurer by 70% by modernizing a 35-year-old legacy. Modernization is helping our clients be more intuitive, responsive, and perceptive. A live enterprise. And we can do the same for you. Transform into a future-ready enterprise with Infosys Modernization Services. Reimagine legacy. Succeed with cloud. Well, thank you for watching the video so patiently. Now, let me switch back to the screen that we were having. So, are we able to see the screen, the presentation deck, Jerry? Jerry or Cody, can you confirm? Yeah, yeah, we can see. We can see. Go ahead, Rakesh. Well, from the video, what you heard, it is very clear that reimagining legacy and moving to cloud is the way forward. Not doing anything is not an option, but in order to do that, automation is a must. And that's the key differentiator Infosys brings in. While what you saw in the video was more comprehensive set of automation we have to offer as part of this platform. But today in the context of specifically mainframe organization, what I'm showing on the screen are the capabilities of this ID platform that is only for mainframe. So to begin with code analysis, which is always the first step towards any program that we, you wish to start, whether that be optimizing workloads on mainframe or offloading them to cloud through various dispositions like re-engineer, re-host, refactor, or any such disposition. Plus the data migration and testing that is any way necessary to do the overall modernization in terms of comparison testing and bring in as much of automation possible. So all these automation will help at the end or it will complement the overall zero cost transformation. One way we are reducing through the optimization and at the same time we are reducing the overall efforts and saving a lot of efforts, a lot of uh, fund money over there by generating funds for the zero cost transformation. Now let's get into a little more specific on what activities this, this platform is going to really help with. While in the initial part, we saw a lot of options under the art framework. On this slide, what, are, what we have put is the dispositions which are more aligned with the zero cost transformation, either in terms of optimization as the initial phase. And after that, how do we help our clients to get them off mainframe or get the transformation objective satisfied? So what we have put here, the four dispositions more aligned to this, beginning with the optimization and then the three more popular options or three more disposition options for the mainframe offloading, rehost, then refactor, and then finally the re-engineer, which is the ground up. Coming to the first option. So what you see over here is for the first option itself, irrespective of the phases, our iLead platform is going to pitch in and help in the activities. For example, optimization, obviously the first thing what we look at is how do we optimize the MIPS? How do we improve the performance? How do we realign the batches so that they are able to complete sooner? How are we able to provide more and more online timing to our users or the end users of our client? 
So all those analysis is only possible if we have access to the system log of mainframe and those are not easy. So that's where the platform comes in handy and it will be able to understand the system log and provide a lot of insights related to the MIPS or basically the workloads running on mainframe. Now on the mainframe, if we are upgrading the COBOL versions, whether that be a very old or the one of the latest, but we still want to be the latest. So that's where the platform can still help. And while doing so, if we have a need to migrate the data from vSAM to DB2 to unlock the data in more efficient way through the RDBMS provided features, then we can use the platform for this. And finally, comparison testing if we have any use case within mainframe itself. Now, all these will help to optimize the overall mainframe and help us to generate some funding for the transformation. So coming to the second part of it, in the transformation, if we are looking at rehost using microfocus, one of the very important activities is identifying the compatibility, identifying the compatibility of the technology like COBOL PL1, which we plan to rehost or lift and shift. So the compatibility percentage, the higher, the easier the rehost becomes. The lower, possibly, it is not even fit for rehost. Then when it comes to the migration of the code, the platform can help to migrate the code in an automatic way for the code which is compatible, like COBOL and PL1. Not everything, because all the others, we have to anyway do a rewrite or a re-engineer. Same way, data migration, we spend a lot of effort in strategizing how to do it, how to achieve the parallel data migration and all those. Now, all those are built into the platform in a way that we can see everything through a workflow. So like-to-like -like VSAM migration, like-to-like -like IMS DB migration, and DB2 to RDBMS like SQL Server, Oracle, Postgres. All those are supported by the ILE platform. And finally, again, the testing and deployment. These are also supported by the platform. All these in case of microfocus. So that is also provided AWS M2 as part of the overall offering, and we complement all those. Coming to code refactoring using Blue specifically, while Blue does the overall code migration and a lot of uh, also does a lot of analysis in terms of what is uh, what is feasible what, and how much enhancement is required. There is also a piece of analysis which can be taken care of by the ILE platform, specifically the active core segregation. We do not want to spend effort on the code which is not running on the system today. Now it is very necessary to identify and remove them from the scope so that we are able to achieve our overall migration scope quickly and efficiently. Similarly, DB2 to RDBMS migration as part of this BUS code refactoring, ILE platform supports, and there is AWS data migration service also providing similar kind of uh, capabilities. Now for testing, specifically the functional equivalent testing, which is the very, very specific and critical aspect of the BUS refactoring that is also supported by the ILE platform. And then finally, the CICD pipeline. Coming to the last option, which is about re-engineering, which is about building the entire application from ground up, reimagining everything, process, trans process transformation, process rationalization, simplification. All those can be done in a very nice way through the code analysis to understand how all the modules are interacting with each other. And then the very tedious work in case of a ground up rewrite is rules extraction. So that is also supported by the platform. And then again, obviously, the data migration is part of any re-engineer or re margin So that is also supported. The differentiator in this case is also NoSQL is also supported. Then testing, the peculiar one is scenario-based testing, which is more popular when we are doing a re because we want to test based on the user-specific data. So instead of doing a complete code-to-code -code comparison or table-to-table -table comparison, we are going to do a scenario based testing. So that is also supported by the platform. And then finally, the complete CI CD pipeline. So, all in all, the, with the help of the platform, we will be able to save minimum of 30% efforts for some of these activities, and which can go up to 90% of effort savings over the manual exercise. So, why not use the platform? And by using it in over the last several years, we have enhanced in a way that now it is it has got so mature it is able to handle more and more patterns 
more and more features we are building. So we have a dedicated team who works in enhancing this day in, day out. So with this, now let's move into the platform itself. So this is a live enterprise application development platform. Within this, what we are seeing is the dashboard where we have loaded the inventory. So it takes the entire inventory as input. Primarily, it supports COBOL, PL1, JCL, IMS, PROC, control card, and different type of cards. And it does the whole processing in about a week's time. And after that, what we want to see is how are different sub application or modules or capabilities they are interacting with each other within the platform so for that what we have developed is if these four are the different sub applications how are they interacting with each other through the files through the programs through the tables basically through the program and data how do they interact how it comes in handy is when we want to design the sequence how do we want to do the migration of mainframe we obviously cannot go for a big bang. So we need to decide how are we going to slice and dice horizontally or vertically. So these information or these insights will come in handy because we know report is the one which is probably a candidate which is less intertwined with the other applications. Policy happens to be the one which is at the center, possibly a core application or possibly everybody is interacting with policy. So this will help us to understand and take the decision. Now, this is only a visual representation. If we want to understand in detail, we can download it. We can see every component for which it is interacting or it is uh, it is creating the connection, basically. Now, going into one of the sub applications, let's say policy. So initially, we saw how the data is looking like at the overall level. Now, we want to go into a particular application and see how the data is looking like. Similarly, we want to see how the components are interacting with each other, whether it is file, program, or table with, among themselves. So again, for a larger application, obviously, the visual may not be so helpful. So we can download it and filter it based on whatever we want to use and do further analysis. Now, another very important feature is how do we, if we want to understand from an application point of view, how the programs are calling the data or how are they interacting with the tables what are the different type of operations who is writing into the data who is updating the data who is deleting it so that we can put together them and take a decision here are the programs that we have to migrate if we have to if we have to migrate this particular table so that way it will become helpful and right now what you are seeing is if policy is the application these are all the programs within the policy application and these are all the tables and also it will tell you what are the different type of operations like create read update delete based on the legends that is provided now if, if i have to switch this overview we saw it from a program point of view now if you want to see from a data point of view so right now what we are seeing is within the same policy application if these are all my tables what are the programs accessing it and again in which mode so all these will be helpful to take a decision. How do we club them together? And in case of a reimagining, it will help us to decide if we have to build the, let's say, agent commission is a new functionality we are building. So for that, what are the programs? What are the tables that we must look into? And what data is coming into the table? Who is writing and who is writing and who is reading? So all those insights will be helpful to the, take the decision and break the application in a way that we are able to build it properly. Now, there are various other reports which are available, but in the interest of time, let me just call out SQL queries for, and then program pattern analysis, how each program looks like, how complex it is going to be, program specific flow, within a program, how the flow is. So all those reports are available. Now, metrics, several complexity matrices. Then data lineage, how the data flow within a program, all those are available. And now let's move on to an, a feature which is more relevant for a reimagine or rewrite kind of a project, but so which is about rules extraction. So what we have here is a pan where we allow analysts to come over and look at the program and the platform is going to automatically, based on some predefined rules, 
or predefined configurations segregated into multiple rules. So we use this platform to document these rules, which then is enhanced by business analyst or rule analyst. And at the end, we produce something called a requirement document. Let me quickly show you a sample of it. So these requirement document is finally fed into the team who is going to develop the applications from ground up. So this is the most tedious job when we are undertaking any kind of a rewrite work. So it will have technical information about the program or the use case for which we are building all this. And it will also have different rules, which are like English, like pseudo code, which can be understood by somebody who is less technical or not in some cases, not technical at all. So that's about the rules extraction. Now going back to the platform and let's look at the last feature of the platform for, for today's webinar. This is about rehost. Now, as I was telling the most critical part of rehost is the compatibility. So we need to understand what type of components are available within the inventory. Is it COBOL, is it PL1, or it's something else? And now let's look at the compatibility piece. So what the platform does automatically through its processing powers is it will be able to tell what is the overall inventory-wise compatibility. So here it says 72.82. It may not be great, but it is still good enough case to do a repost using microfocus. The remaining 28 approximately, we have to obviously take some remediation and the remediation is required for this piece. So it is also going to tell what is the pattern not compatible. For example, assembler, easy treat or easy treat macro at a component type level, number of components, and we can also download them. Now note that when it says COBOL is compatible, we also know very well within COBOL also there are a lot of verbs, a lot of statements which may not be so compatible. So this platform not only tells which type of component is not compatible, but even for the compatible components, what verbs and others are not supported. So for example, compiler directing, it will tell what is the keyword, what is not supported and all those. So all in all, at the end of this uh, exercise, we will have very good information about how much effort we need to fix all these things and take decisions which will be helpful to do the migration in a very, uh, very efficient way. So that brings us to the end of the second part of the webinar. Now, if there are questions, please put it in the chat window. I'll be happy to answer them. Now, with this, I'm handing it over to Raz for the last and the third part of the webinar, which is a panel discussion. Thank you, Rakesh. Thank you very much. Um, as a quick introduction, my name is uh, Raj Gopal, Senior Partner Solution Architect from Infosys uh, with over 25 years of uh, industry experience in this space. Uh, for next 10 to 15 minutes, I will enable a brief panel discussion, primarily focusing on AWS mainframe modernization service, which is called as M2 service, with uh, refactor as one of the plat uh, one of the pattern. That uh, that means that which integrates AWS Blue Edge tool and uh, provides a single uh, platform to mod modernization modernizing the mainframe applications faster. As uh, most of you know. Refactor is uh, one of the many disposition strategies adopted by uh, industry leaders, uh, for, no, followed in the which is followed in the mainframe modernizing, modernizing the mainframe applications to modern technology. Um, AWS uh, Blue Edge tool is a faster to modernizing uh, the mecha modernization mechanism, with 100% of uh, code automation is uh, code transformation automation is achieved. Uh, in in, in uh, migrating uh, the legacy applications to modern platform. And uh, you know that means uh, joining hands uh, with the AWS uh, partner Infosys on these uh, modernization opportunities, uh, which helps a customer to realize uh, Infosys uh, zero, zero cost transformation benefits faster. I do have uh, Sudhir uh, from Infosys and Fred uh, from AWS uh, with me here for the discussion. Sudhir is a, is a principal uh, architect from Infosys, uh, uh, Le Infosys legacy modernization practice. And uh, Fred uh, is, is a senior manager uh, software development from AWS. Uh, they are going to uh, you know, briefly share the experiences in executing uh, 
similar kind of uh, projects predominantly surrounding AWS uh, Blue Edge uh, Refactor tool uh, jointly together and also successfully. Thank you, Sudhir and Fred, for uh, joining me here. Let me start with you, Fred. Uh, uh, Fred, can you share, uh, you know, briefly one or two project experiences in executing uh, by using AWS Blue Edge Refactor tool? Uh, can you please throw some lights on that, Fred? Thank you, Raj. Absolutely, and uh, very happy to be in this panel and to to contribute. So I'm gonna go over a couple of examples. Uh, where Infosys and AWS worked in partnership to deliver COBOL to Java refactoring projects and taking the customer basically from the I IBM ZOS world to, to AWS. So uh, going with the first customer, the first customer is a US-based public transportation company. Um, they reached out to Infosys to modernize and migrate a uh, going to AWS, a mission-critical public service system so that's in the transportation business uh, this system is made up of 20 plus applications runs on the ibm zos and was written in cobalt and assembler with very specific business rules that go back 30 years plus uh, total line of code about 4.5 million lines of code of cobalt and assembler and GC, jcls um, one of the key drivers for, for them to modernize uh, was also the lack of COBOL resources. You know, they have their key SMEs that are retiring and they're having trouble to find resources. Uh, so with this modernization journey, which started at the end of 2022, uh, the agency is trying to minimize the risk for this system because it, it really drives operations um, and, and, and they're targeting to reduce their costs by uh, 50%. So their operational costs, that's contributing to the zero cost journey in the end, uh, the, the, the reduction of TCO is 50%. Uh, the first set of application will go live uh, at the end of 2023. Uh, they'll go live on AWS and we're leveraging services such as uh, EC2, DB2, LUW on EC2, EFS, MQS, uh, and the project is on track also to complete by the end of 2024. Um, second project uh, is with a major insurance company and they are modernizing their accounting and trade platform, which is also centered on a ZOS and, and with a DB2 database. Uh, the system includes two sites, uh, dozens of Java applications that are running on-premise accessing the DB2 ZOS database, as well as a very large part of uh, COBOL batch processing, 2.4 million lines of code of COBOL and, and JCL. Um, so they were facing really a critical timeline around their IBM mainframe renewal contract, uh, and, and they engage both emphasis and they AWS to complete that modernization of that system within 10 months to meet uh, that data line. Uh, the project started in the spring of 2023. We are now entering UAT. So we're getting in the final phase of the project with a, with a go-live that's planned for the beginning of 2024. Um, and, and we'll be deploying that that modernized application on AWS using, again, services like uh, ECS, EFS, DB2, and UW. Overall, again, a reduction of cost of uh, over 55% uh, with the go live of the project. Thank you, Fred. I mean, it's, it's awesome. Really, it's 10 months duration, uh, which is uh, definitely a faster to migration path. Uh, by the way, Fred, uh, how is your uh, working experience with our partners in forces towards achieving our common goals? Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, from the delivery perspective. Can you elaborate and throw some lights on that, uh, uh, Fred? Yeah, it's, a, it, it's really been a great collaboration working with uh, Sadia and team. Um, I think Amazon brings the expertise around, you know, we're talking about refactor here, May, brings the expertise about mainframe modernization, Blue Edge. Um, we take care of the calibration phase of the project, transforming the COBOL to Java, uh, and we give emphasis the Java code that's modernized, that's AAA in SonarCube, meaning that 
It is maintainable Java with uh, A for security, reliability, and, and maintainability. Um, what Infosys brings first is scale to, to, to start that functional equivalence testing. It's not just the code. It's the code should do the same thing with the same performance. Um, and they bring in the teams to scale up that uh, testing using automation. And we saw some of that in the, in the dem demonstration. At the end of the day, it's, you know, one of those projects is mostly batch. It's rerunning those batch, making sure that all the results, the tables, the files, the reports, the results are exactly the same and they match to the penny. Um, they, they, they have this in-depth knowledge of both the, the modern environments, the Java that we are going to, and also the uh, legacy environments. And this is an, also very important because it's not just about transforming the code, it's also all the integration aspects. To take an example of one of those projects, it has a ZTPF uh, that's hitting the DB2 database on the mainframe. Well, this DB2 database on the mainframe is now on AWS. And Infosys work with uh, the IBM lab to demonstrate and build a prototype very quickly to demonstrate that it was possible from AWS, the modernized application to access uh, the, the, the ZTPF, create that link uh, between the two worlds. So overall, it's really that key cross knowledge across the mainframe and the, the, the Java world that Infosys is bringing to the table uh, to help the customers uh, on their journey to, to, to AWS. Awesome, thank you, Fred. And uh, by the way, Sudhir, uh, what's your experience uh, you know, on the part of Infosys in working closely with the AWS team, uh, Sudhir? Can you throw uh, some lights on how the calibrated code was tested, how how the testing was, you know, primarily done in uh, you know vis -a -vis with uh, AWS team? Well, thank you, Raj. Very uh, glad to be part of the panel this morning. So, what we have done as part of the uh, calibration phase which uh, Fred just mentioned is, apart from the standard activities like your assessment and uh, proof of concept, so most of the customer specific unique coding patterns on the third party utilities are identified so that AWS Blue Edge can customize their conversion tool set and the database migration scripts wherever that's needed. In addition, uh, AWS Blue Edge also tested the code quality, maintainability, and security using SonarCube, which from Fred just mentioned now, before delivering the code to Infosys and customer. So what we also have done is we have provided some of the key test cases to Blue Edge before they delivered the code to us so that they can test at their environment before delivering the code to us. So subsequently, what we have done was Infosys conducted the functional equivalence testing and utilized all required code coverage and test coverage reports before moving uh, to the subsequent phases of testing. So this is just not the functional testing though, by the way, but the Infosys also passed on this generated code via enterprise security tools like check marks and Fortify, whatever your customer may have just to make sure that there are no vulnerabilities are injected as part of the conversion process. So this entire process is automated via customer CI CD process and the DevSecOps uh, implementation practices. So the one key thing that I want to attribute now is we did not move the code beyond the system testing phase without addressing any functionality and the quality security issues. So post that, all the required integration, security, end-to-end, -end acceptance testings were uh, taken care. That was our experience by and large. Thank you, Sudhir. Uh, just due to the want of time, Sudhir, uh, let me ask one final question to both of you. Sudhir, uh, you go first. What What are the lessons learned out of this uh, these kind of you know project experiences? Can you elaborate top one or two lessons during the course of the project executions? Absolutely. So one, one of the fundamental thing that I should say is uh, identification of unique coding patterns and IBM third party utilities and the modules without source code, any such uh, critical issues during the assessment and calibration phase 
will help in customizing the code refactoring tool set and any further code remediation needs. That is the first and foremost. The second one is you have to focus more on the functional equivalence testing and also adopt approaches like test driven development just to make sure that you are shifting the your entire testing process towards the left so that you address any defects effectively. And the third and most important is capturing customers, enterprise technology standards, CICD processes, DevSecOps processes well in advance so that you can plan all those things much ahead without having any repetition. These are at least that I could think of from the implementations we have done, Raj. Thank you, Sudhir. Um, Fred, yourself, any quick point that you would like to share so that we can move on to the next topic? Yeah, I think, I think uh, mainframe modernization is complex, involves multiple parties. I was at a go live uh, uh, over a weekend uh, a few months ago and just on the kickoff meeting for that go live. So going from uh, mainframe to AWS, there were 37 uh, different people that were present, five different parties. So those projects are really complex. And we have something with emphasis is we have a racy, very precise, but, but it's not a racy that's frozen. It's a racy that we improve with every project. And those two projects are good examples of working together, improving the way we work together. And, and that's a key uh, importance going forward on, on, on projects. Uh, the other thing is, you know, and we've said it is don't take shortcuts. Uh, so, so the engagement process is to start with the assessment, start with the POCs, uh, and, and that's to get a clear picture. You don't want to modernize code that is not used. That was a good example that Rakesh gave. Um, you want to make sure that you've tried the tools on the code that you are going to modernize before you get started. Because at the end of the day, that's very important for making a, a, an engagement with a customer on the journey. And, and, and finally, I'll, I'll, I'll finish with one thing. I mean, don't take shortcuts on your testing. Bring intelligence in the way you test because you are doing like for like. Bring intelligence. But the most important thing in a mainframe modernization project is a happy go live. And, and I talked about my weekend. It was a happy go live. It had its bumps, but on Monday, everything was was up and it was up because of all the work that was done before in terms of preparation so uh, that that's a, another very important aspect sure sure thank you thank you uh, so much fred and uh, sudhir for sharing the experiences you know from uh, specific customer use cases right uh, with this uh, with a uh, kind of a growing in the, uh, interest in uh, automated refactoring pattern of uh, mainframe modernization opportunities from executives. And with this kind of a successful execution by using AWS uh, Blue Edge tool, I, I, I'm sure, I think, in, in fact, we are all sure that AWS and Infosys partnership can deliver greater value uh, to our customer jointly. Thank you so much uh, once again. And uh, now let me uh, jump out to the last leg of the whole uh, uh, presentation. We do have eight more minutes. Um, I'm going to read out a few uh, questions that has uh, been posted here. Uh, let me go one by one. Let me go there. The first one is uh, this. I, I believe this is for uh, Jaydeep. Are all of these transformations that you explained during the course of the presentation is for AWS implementation? Or this uh, approach, you know, uh, uh, it's across uh, different platforms. Thank you. So. Um, and the case studies that we mentioned is, of course, all on AWS, but broadly, let me also explain the approach. So the approach, the success of the approach depends upon using platforms where you can rapidly modernize and get 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 off the mainframe because you don't want to have both the main mainframes as well as the new system running in parallel for too long a time. So what is important for this approach to work is to have platforms uh, which will help you to get off the mainframe quickly. We believe that M2 solution from uh, from AWS is a good good solution where it actually gives a, a very rapid, a predictable, and reasonably risk free uh, modernization of uh, modernization of the uh, of from from mainframes. So therefore, uh, while while as the approach per se is agnostic, but we have seen a lot of success with the M2 uh, M2 set of products. Um, that's how I wanted to answer that. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Jerry. So the second question which I'm seeing here is uh, 
I think this could potentially be answered by uh, Rakesh or JDP yourself. For zero cost transformation to be successful, how long do you recommend the program to run? Yeah, so Raj, let me take that on the next one, which is about challenges. So broadly, uh, see, this depends upon the complexity of the landscape. Um, so broadly, we have seen that five to seven years is a good number. If you run it for five to seven years, we are able to we will be able to transform um, the landscape and return back uh, the landscape back to the client. And from a challenges perspective, I would believe that uh, the important part is to kind of align the vision for us, our partner, as well as with the client. And that has to go very, very together, lockstep in barrel because, because otherwise, um, if you if, that vision is very important that we should have the same vision and we should work towards that. And secondly, of course, understanding the like, technology landscape is very important because not every part of mainframe is easy to transform. There are difficult parts. Their platforms like what Rakesh showed, I lead is very critical so that you understand this lines, landscape. And the third part is that you, there is a, always in mainframe, there's a lot of partners you have to handle. So for a zero core transformation, it's not just a mainframe. This set of ecosystem that you have to manage. So how good you are managing that ecosystem, how transparently you understand the um, partnership those product vendors have with our client is also important um, success factors for this uh, zero cost transformation. Thank you, Jadip. I think you covered the next couple of questions in terms of challenges. Can you also add uh, from the perspective of uh, some data migration or uh, in terms of MIS uh, uh, no reports migrating onto the cloud? Because there was one question which is attached to the challenges. I would probably request Rakesh to answer that because uh, let him let yeah. him take that. Rakesh, go ahead. Yeah. So in terms of reports, uh, we have two patterns that we have seen. One, where the products are used. Some products which are used within the mainframe landscape and that needs to be migrated. The second, we use some programming language to generate the reports. The first part where it is about product, we always try to look for an equivalent replacement. Sometimes the same vendor itself has a distributed version, which is much easier to migrate to with the help of with the help of the vendor and some accelerator. If not, then we look for a vendor to do some POC or evaluation to see which would be the right vendor to replace it. I mean, a different vendor, of course. And the second part where it is more about custom built programs, which are generating the reports. Then also we try to see now that we are going into the distributed world, do we have a report uh, or do we have a product which is more suitable for report repository report creation rather than building everything again from scratch. Now, if not, then in some cases, which is again rare, we have to rewrite in a programming language in alignment with the enterprise wide strategy, what the client is already following. Thank you, Rakesh. In fact, uh, just to add to what you said, the AWS uh, M2 service also has a separate pattern for data augmentation, through yeah. which uh, the data migration could seamlessly be uh, you know, delivered to the customer. So there are uh, you know, specific use cases which you may uh, want to look at it in the AWS M2 service uh, website. So this next question is pretty interesting, Jaydeep. Uh, you know, this is uh, the, basically uh, uh, the gentleman says that any project can go wrong. What is the success ratio you see in mainframe migration to cloud and what is the corrective action if something fails? Yeah, um, so the, yeah, that's right. So um, the programs can go wrong. So uh, based on experience, so we have this set of uh, prerequisites before we start the program. So I think, I think Fred also mentioned that before you start the program, there are certain prerequisites that you have to hit, and those has to be understanding the landscape very well, understanding the ecosystem, understanding the vision of the clients. I mean, I think broadly, if you get that, and if you are doing a proper assessment to find out there are no incompatible patterns, or there are very few incompatible patterns, broadly the program will not be successful. They typically the programs are. Un uh, unsuccessful because of three reasons. One is that there are certain uh, patterns that you don't realize till the last minute, or you have uh, some performance issues that you cannot resolve because you have not looked at certain scenario while you are doing the POC prototyping. Or thirdly, at some point of time, the client has a little bit lost interest or they have got other priorities. So unless you you know that and you build the trust and work together, they won't be um, they won't be unsuccessful, and that's kind of answers the corrective actions also. Yeah, no, absolutely. You are right. And in fact, uh, the fail fast uh, uh, model also you know, plays into major absolutely. role. Because 
Yeah, you do a quicker yeah. and faster POC, right? So, yeah. Maybe I can add a word. I think also one key aspect is, and it goes back to the teams, to the knowledge of the teams. There, there, there will always be some bumps and for some unforeseen things on a mainframe uh, project. Uh, but with Infosys working with Blue Edge, you have teams, that experience of the mainframe, that experience of the modern world, when you find such a bump, you work with the customer to to build the solutions, uh, and and that's really I mean, you know, I've, I've never failed on a project, but but we've I've had bumps, and it's always been through uh, that work with the with with the the customers working with the partners to to come up with a solution, and having the right team and the right framework is very important for that. Thank you, thank you for that. I think we are up in the uh, up for the discussion, Cody. Over to you. I think we are awesome. Done. Yeah, we are done. Yeah, thank you, Raja Gopal. I, I appreciate that. And this conversation has been awesome. Um, this hour has absolutely flown by. Um, so I would just like to remind our audience that we have recorded this last hour. So if you'd like to watch it at a later point in time, you will be receiving an email with a link to access that recording. Um, so to our panelists, thank you all so much for joining us today on Tech Strong Learning. Um, like I said, it's been an awesome conversation, and it was so great to have each of you on with us. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Perfect. So before I let our audience go, I do just want to give away a couple of gift cards. Our winners for our four twenty-five dollar Amazon gift card drawing are Beatriz S, Hans O, Barkat D, and Jibin J. So to our four winners, keep an eye out for an email from me. I'll be contacting you shortly to distribute these gift cards. But if you don't happen to see an email from me, check your strip your spam folder, just in case it happens to be filtered out. I'd like to thank AWS and Infosys for sponsoring our program today. And to our audience, thank you so much for being here with us. I have a link in the chat to our post webinar survey, but if you stick around for just a minute longer, you will be directed to it. We'd love to hear your thoughts about today's program or future topics. Um, so once again, thank you again to our panel. Thank you to everyone here. You may all disconnect and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.